welcome back to Spinster's Library. Today, you are graced with my presents. The first time since... Oh, you know what? I think it might have been August. <sighs> Too long. It's been I mean, a while. Every single time we say, don't worry, we won't leave it this long again. <laughs> but, you know, we're busy women. But hi! And for those of you, many of you, wow, that have joined Spinster's Library's journey, I'm Robin, and I'm the guest spinster. Yeah, I mean, I, you've clearly missed this. Maybe you should start your own channel after all. Oh my goodness. Robin shows up on my channel occasionally as the guest spinster, usually when we do a book haul. Yes. But today we're not doing a book haul. No, because this we... is my bookshelf. Oh yeah, I should have explained. So first of all, it's yeah. Robin's birthday today. Hi! It Yay! won't be when this goes out, but it is today as we're filming this. Day of filming, birthday. Yes. And, and we are at, at her lovely house in the Welsh countryside. Really, really nice place. By the seaside. And check out this bookshelf. So this is my bookshelf. Everything from about here, so behind Claudia, all the way to here. I have not yet read. <laughs> this section that's about that big, I mean it's doubled up by the way, there's books behind. It's about that big on the other side. I have read, so there's lots to read. I ain't doing no hauls. Anyway, we are doing... Today we're doing the Books with Friends tag. And this is a tag that was originally done by Hannah from Hannah's Books and she did this tag with her husband and it's a really lovely tag. It's kind of made to encourage conversation between friends. Yeah, because uh, we're not very good at conversing, you know. Oh yeah, we, we never talk. Like, we literally only talk when the camera's on. Like, we don't even like yeah. each other. Yeah, I mean, I'm just here because, you know, subscribers for her. <laughs> and I, she, I occasionally get coffee from her earnings from YouTube, you know. <laughs> It's a business partnership. Absolutely. So today we're doing the Books with Friends tag and I'm just going to start asking you those questions. So you haven't seen this. I sent you those when Hannah published her video. Yes, yeah, so I read them and that was a long time ago and a lot's happened since then. My birthday, Christmas, blah, 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 blah. We've got a dog. Who might appear? Who might not? Well, I hope he shows up. I hope so. Yeah. Um. So no, I really genuinely don't remember. I remember it's all about kind of experience with books, what we've read, but I don't remember specifically what the questions are. So I'm really excited for this actually and there's probably going to be a lot of editing for you. Sorry about that. Let's get started. <laughs> Question one. Tell me about a few of your favourite books. Easy. Okay. Eleanor Oliphant by far one of my favorite books i read it two years ago now i think it was it was in yeah. my first year no actually reading. i think it was last year because i feel like i only read it last year and oh sorry it's 2020 now in 2018 yeah that's what i yeah. meant that's why i went two years yeah, ago yeah i just forgot that it's 2020 yeah happy new year um so, <laughs> so eleanor oliphant um i this read is, eleanor, sorry eleanor oliphant is completely fine it's completely fine by gail honeyman you're going to be good at this bit. So I'm going to say like little short snippets from the title and Claudia will actually do the proper stuff sure. that you want to know. But it will also be in the description box as well. Yes. So, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Girl Honeyman. Um, I remember picking that book up. It was recommended by you mm -hmm. and I think Ellie also had read it by that point as yes, well. Yes, our so, mutual so, friend Ellie. Yeah, so, so there was a lot of hype about it in our kind of friendship circle. So I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. Mm. And I just remember thinking how there are so many elephants of the protagonist that I can relate to so much. Elements. Elements? You, you literally said elephants? <laughs> <laughs> Did I seriously say elephant? You did. I'm thinking of elephant, Ol <laughs> Eleanor Oliphant, elephant. Yeah. Oh You're like, there are so many elephants I can relate to. <laughs> I mean, I do relate to an elephant as well. It's been a, it's been a heavy Christmas. <laughs> yes. Elements. And Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Of Ele oh my God, I give up. Yeah, she's very relatable. Even yeah. though she is not a very average person. Yeah. She's definitely not like an, you know, every woman type character. Yeah. And yet she's very, very relatable, which is partly due because it's like from her perspective. Yeah. And also I think it helps. I, actually, you're quite a bit younger, I think, than she. She's in her late 20s. Yeah. But I could relate to the stage that she's in in her life and the kind of age as well. And I think it's the internal monologue that kind of got to me. There was, I mean, one bit that really stood out, and it's always a bit that I refer to. It's not a big, you know, it's not a spoiler, yeah. but it just makes me giggle. Is, you know, um, you know, she had like an internal monologue. Bearing in mind, I read it two years ago. I can't remember exactly the quote. But she was saying, you know, oh, you know, I'd love to be able to walk down the stairs and not like grunt like a pig when I'm breathing <laughs> out. Do you remember that? Because no, I, 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 the amount of times I do that where I'm like running up the stairs to like the bathroom or whatever, yeah. and then I get to the top and I'm like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that is so relatable. 
beautiful. But anyway, no, I think it's a really beautiful, cleverly written kind of mm. combination of comedy and heartbreak and really, I don't know, just a really amazing story. Yeah. Um, highly recommend to everybody. It's very easy to read as well. Yeah. Like it's not, it doesn't ask a lot of the reader. Yeah. It just throws you straight into the story. Yeah, definitely. And then, um, not any book in, in particular, but the Strike Cormoran? Cormoran Strike series, Cormoran yeah, Strike. by Robert Galbraith. <laughs> yeah, so the series, that series I absolutely adored. We actually pre-ordered Lethal White, which did, is the yeah. fourth in the series. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, without going into too much detail, you know, the first book of the series, which is The Cuckoo's Calling. Yeah. Hey, it's still there. You're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> um, was the first book I read since a long time there's a yeah. video on that a separate video on that but it really was amazing how you know i was really drawn in and just love reading it and i just completely smashed mm -hmm. out the series and then when lethal white came out i'd only just kind of finished the third book so it was just really cool that yeah. i could kind of read the whole series up to date and and so that was really cool and i just love crime thrillers it got you into crime thrillers yeah, because you, like you, already, yeah. you already enjoyed crime thrillers on tv yeah and i think that's why i recommended those to it you. was yeah um so that like i said there's a separate video on the like the detail of i'll that. link it in the description box yeah but no that was i, I really love that series and then the last kind of Again, no book in particular, but the last author that I've really enjoyed reading um, was Claire McIntosh. Yes. So again, a crime thriller, but she's got this really kind of clever style, um, and she takes you on this journey, and it's a roller coaster, and there's so many twists and turns. Mm -hmm. And I think some people who I've recommended it to, I mean, everyone's enjoyed the book. Some people have found them obvious. Um, other people were as blown away as I was, like, wow, I really was not expecting this twist. Um, but I, again, easy reading but crime thriller, so you know, you can get really hooked. Mm -hmm. And I just think she's a brilliant author. So those kind of three author series yeah. slash books are the, are the main ones that really stand yeah. out to me as favorites. Yeah. yeah. I like Claire McIntosh. I wasn't as blown away by her books as you were, yeah. but I enjoyed them. Which one would you recommend if someone hasn't read a Claire McIntosh yet? Which one would you begin with? I see you. I see you, okay. And um, yeah. that will be linked in the description box yeah. as well. I see you is brilliant. Cool, let's move on to question two. What books have you read that you hated? Oh, that's a really good question because I tend to just block those out of my mind. Because <laughs> I think I've given you a few where you were like, actually, I'm not too keen on that one. One that you picked up and you weren't too keen on was the other J.K. Rowling one, the the casual oh, vacancy. Oh, the casual vacancy. Yeah. yeah so I really. Uh, oh, hello, hi, baby. Embo. Oh, you can see, see if I can get his him in nose. frame. Yeah. So um, Embo, you say as if he's gonna jump on your yeah, legs. Yeah, Embo has three <laughs> legs. He is missing a back leg, so he doesn't jump up. So you probably won't see him. You saw a bit of a nose here. Um, yeah. So the casual vacancy, J.K. Rowling. I thought I'd enjoy it because I enjoyed the the uh, Cormoran Strike yeah. series. But I really battled through, and I have a bit of an OCD type of problem, which I, is a struggle actually. That is, even though I'm not enjoying a book, I really feel like I have to finish it, and I don't. And I. It's like a guilt that if I put it away and just yeah. think, well, like, I couldn't read it, it was boring or I didn't enjoy it. Mm. I really struggle knowing that that book has not been read. Yeah, I'm the same actually. I'm, yeah. I'm working through it. And my plan for this year is to put DNF more down. books. Yeah, and I find that really hard to do. So that was one that I really battled through. And I think just the pace, it wasn't really for me. I didn't find the plot very kind of enticing. I just really didn't enjoy it. You're um, not the only one. It's not very popular. Yeah, yeah and I then like one that's actually a really interesting one was um the butler what's it called oh the the kazuri shiguro one yes what's it called um the remains, the remains of, the of the day yes so the remains of the day um when i one first of my read favorites. that yeah, yeah so you recommended it one of when i first read it i found it really slow and i think that's one thing i like about crime thrillers is that they tend to move very quickly and i think i like the progression of, mm. you know quick progression yeah. in novels so the remains of the day I <laughs> found really slow, didn't yeah, like really get the happens, point, nothing basically. happens in the plot, I didn't really get the point of the book, but I did read it and I did actually like, it. Did I did get through it quickly, so I wasn't a slog like the casual vacancy. So then when I finished it, I gave it three stars, but then for like weeks, probably even <laughs> months after it, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop thinking about, you know, again, internal monologue from the protagonist. I just was so drawn in by it. And then we went and did a book haul and I had to get my own copy. <laughs> and, yeah. and then I changed my rating, I think to four or five, I can't yeah. remember, but I did up it because I think it's one of those that makes you think. And I don't think I was prepared for that, mm. um, which is why initially I didn't enjoy it. But I think it was like type two. 
enjoyment. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it after and I will read it yeah. again. So that was that's an interesting one. Maybe maybe slightly off topic. That's interesting though. Yeah. I loved it immediately, but um it's so different from the other books that you'd yeah. read up until that point. Yeah. Which is probably why I struggled to enjoy it initially, but yeah. I like the twist in my own kind of enjoyment from that. Yeah. <laughs> um, question three. Any non-fiction favourites? Ooh, non-fiction. We both don't really read that much non-fiction. No. Um, this book here, I'm just going to be that person. Who, I'm just going to draw this off the shelf. Oh, that's fine. That's what booktubers do. So it's called Tornado Down. It's written by, is it John Peters and John Nichols? I'm not entirely it says sure. On the side. Oh, John Peters and John Nichols. Yeah. yeah, so John Peters and John Nichols. So my dad was in the Royal Air Force. Um, so I find it, I really enjoy stories about, you know, real life stories about the forces. And I think my dad knows one of them. I really can't remember. That's terrible. Um, but this is all about, so it was the Gulf War. Um, they were tornado pilots. So the tornado is the aircraft that's on there, like fighter jets, basically. Um, and they got shot down. Um, and they got captured and it's all about their story of how what happened and how they survived and how they got out and I think because my dad was kind of you know he was sent out for the Gulf War and the Iraq War and he was involved um, it feels quite personal mm -hmm. and especially because he knows well, one of them <laughs> you know it's, it's quite special in, in a way and um, I'm very proud of my dad you know that's one thing that I really you know, I, I just think he's incredible for, for the work that he's done for the country. Um, so this is one book that I haven't read in a long time and I asked if I could take it home because I really want to read it again. Mm. So that's that's a non-fiction that I definitely enjoy. But like you say, we don't really... Would you say that Matt Haig is non-fiction? Uh, some of his books are, right? Yeah, so he does have fictional books. I don't think this is fiction. I've not actually read any yet. Yeah. Got them on my TBR. So Matt Haig is one of my favourite authors ever because of um, his approach to normalising mental health issues and sort of making things make a lot of sense um, and how to kind of cope with you know new technology and technology and you know how fast-paced the world is and our lives are nowadays. So Notes on a Nervous Planet, this one is the first uh, book that I read by him. It's kind of like self-help basically. Mm -hmm but in a very beautiful way. So even if you aren't struggling with mental health, I still think his writing is really beautiful and he has a really interesting perspective on the world. And it's kind of his perspective very poetically, if mm. that makes sense. Definitely one I have to get into. I've got, yeah. I think, two of his books on my TBR. Yeah, you're welcome to borrow that. Yeah. Listen, I have to get to my own TBR first. I count it and I I've got over 60 books on my oh TBR. My I don't I even want to count. That's how stressed I am about <laughs> my TBR. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. What question are we on? Uh, this was three. It's, it's, it's okay, it's going to be a long video. Sorry. <laughs> what books were important to you when you were young? So, as per the previous video that we've mentioned, I only got into reading two years ago, 2018. Um, so, there's a, a longer explanation, but basically I was put off by the Harry Potter series and <laughs> didn't have anything else to read at the time. So My heart. I know, sorry. <laughs> um, so, I think... There were, there were a few books that I remember growing up. So there was one, I mean, this is when I was very small. And there was one called, um, oh my goodness, what is, what is it called? What was it about? I Love You to the Moon and Back, oh, I think. I don't think I've heard of that. Yeah, so children's book. And it's about these, these mummy, a mummy hair and a baby hair, like as in hair, Bunnies, yeah. not hair. <laughs> and it was just, it was a really sweet book and um, me and my mum still reference it today, you know, on the phone. Love you to the moon and back, you know. And it's just one of those stories that feels really at home. Another one is Peace at Last by Jill Murphy, I think it is. Okay. And that's it's like a teddy bear book and it's about daddy bear, like not getting any sleep because mummy bear is snoring and baby bear anyway. So a lot of the books that mean a lot to me are children's mm -hmm. books from when I was very, very small. That being said, there was Spike Milligan's poetry book that was gifted to me by my uncle. And I just remember countless nights laughing my head off with one of my parents reading that to me. And I still occasionally pull it out now and will read a, a poem or something and it just makes me giggle so much. So, but other than okay. that, there weren't like novels necessarily that yeah. I that I read. But that's quite sweet, up. though. So yeah, children's that's... books mainly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we all have children's books that we remember very fondly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Ooh, question five: Have you discovered any children's books that are meaningful to you now, but which you found as an adult? Does YA count? 
You know what? We can make whatever we want out of these questions. I wouldn't count YA as children's books, but um, if you don't have any children's books to mention, you might... Yeah. Elsewhere. It's on here. It's somewhere. Or did I lend it to someone? I might have actually lent... I have. I've lent it to someone. Oh, no! Yeah, it's a uh, young adult contemporary slash magical realism. Yeah. And who's it by? Um, Gabrielle Zevin. Gabrielle Zevin, that's it. So, elsewhere... What was the question? Uh, children's book, or in this case, we're turning it into young adult books that you didn't read as a teenager, but, but that you read now, discovered yeah. now as an adult. Yeah, so um, I'm pretty sure that when we hauled it, I spoke a bit more about it. So that's a dog groaning. Um, I'm pretty sure when we hauled it, I, I spoke a little bit more about why it's kind of really special. But it's a really comforting perspective on what happens when you die. Mm -hmm. um, I won't say any more than that. I think if you have an open mind and you're quite curious and you like um, a really like kind of interesting perspective on it, it's, it's very sweet, yeah. it's very calming, it doesn't make you stressed at all, it p makes the idea of death, even though it's clearly fictional, it makes the idea of death seem much more kind of appealing and yeah. reassuring. Well, that when the time comes it's not going to be that bad. Um, and I think for me it was just like a really cool really uh different different book perspective yeah. it's like death it's like it is a, <laughs> it's a coming of age story but set in the afterlife yeah that's how i describe it yeah perfect description and it's a great book <laughs> uh oh the next one i mean we've kind of answered this all along but talk about a book we read together because every book <laughs> yeah i feel like we we do recommend books to each other and um, I guess in the beginning it was mostly me recommending books to you, yeah. but then you started reading books and recommending them to me, and it's become like an exchange. You yeah, know? definitely. So I don't, I, I don't feel like there's any specific. I think books. if we talk about books that we like discovered together, it would be the Robert Galbraith one because we we read the latest one together, like as it was yeah. coming out. Um, but so many times it'll be Claire like, Macintosh. You Claire Macintosh. Claire Macintosh. I, I wouldn't have picked those. her up without you. I mean, almost all books that we read, we kind of talk about each other about and that's really yeah. great because I don't really have many people that I can talk to about books my cats don't even listen my husband doesn't even listen like <laughs> I think I think what's nice though is that like you say you know Claudia really um, helped guide me um, when I was starting out reading again um, because I always you know r respected Claudia for her really keen interest in reading but just kind of thought I have no idea how you do that <laughs> and and it was so lovely to have books that you know very quickly I could trust Claudia's recommendations mm. and you we know. have different reading tastes we, we should do. mention that but we know each other's reading tastes so well now yeah. that if I read a book and I love it I'm not necessarily going to recommend it to Robin if I don't think she'll enjoy it. Yeah definitely and vice versa as yeah. well and I and I think what I like is when I read a book that I'm not sure about or you know that I have a funny perspective on it I mm. quite like Claudia reading it so then we can actually talk about our varying yeah. opinions because we do I think we do um take books differently as well mm -hmm. when we're reading them we have different you know oh yeah because we're different people with exactly different which is why I love the discussion that comes from you know what reading. a book that you should really read I know it's a classic but don't be don't be put off by it it's The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Bennett I love the film so I definitely give it a go okay and you gave me um I Capture the Castle was that a Christmas present it was wasn't it yeah yeah well, it's, it was some sort yeah yeah so I Capture the Castle is kind of a classic as well and yeah. I really enjoyed that you did yeah. oh yeah yeah I think you love The Secret Garden mostly because you like nature and green things <laughs> the garden look <laughs> Actually, I say that I'm wearing green yeah, today. I say, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the next question I really like. Are there books to associate with the beginning of our relationship or friendship? Not really, because we were friends for about a year or two, two years, before we started reading together and before we started going book shopping together. Yeah. So there aren't really any books that are associated with the beginning of our friendship, except no. a history of Western music. Oh. But there are books that I, when I see the title or when I see the author, I think of Claudia. So mm. like The Remains of the Day, yeah. that is like the number one really that reminds me of you. And then again the um, Robert Galbraith series, mm -hmm. you know, but I think... And Claire Macintosh. Yeah, and I think the thing is though, for me, every book that I've read, we've had a conversation about. Yeah. So I enjoy the fact that I can share my yeah. reading with you. Yeah, it's so, added something to our friendship. Yeah, definitely. And I, And like I say, you know, there's nothing... There's nothing from the start of the friendship, but there's lots. Of, every book that I've read, 
I've kind of picked up on Claudia's opinion or we've shared an opinion or... Or you've lent it to me yeah. so I could read it as well. Question eight. Are there books I might, I might have recommended to you that have become important to you? Elsewhere. Yes. We, we have to tell a story of how you ended up with your own copy of Elsewhere because I had mine and I had it for ages. I bought it a long time ago in Germany and I lent it to Robin and she read it and loved it. And then when we went out secondhand book shopping as we do, she was like, I'm going to find my own copy. And I was no, no, like, no, no, no. I said, I had, I had mentioned a few times on our book calls, previous book calls, that I would love to get my own copy. Yeah. And every time I brought it up, you had said, listen, I got it so long ago. This copy is so old. It was from Germany. I don't even know if the, the young adults of this country, like if, if it was something they enjoyed. Yeah. You're probably not going to find it. It was published in like 2003 or something that's like that. That's it. So then we went to this bookstore that's kind of like, it's not a charity shop. It's but a for profit secondhand. That's yeah. it. Perfect. So I was walk walking around there and I mentioned it again. I just brought it up and said, oh, I'd love my own copy of Elsewhere. It's so had, annoying. You even had written down the title on a piece of paper. For, for what like, I was specifically yeah. looking out for. Literally, I'm not even joking. This is no exaggeration. And I am renowned for exaggerating, but this is genuinely not an exaggeration. I have Claudia can, to vouch for it. Can confirm. I said to Claudia, I'd love my own copy. I then looked down to the bottom shelf of this bookshelf and I am not kidding, it was staring at me. It was not right the there. same edition, so it wasn't even like I was looking for a specific, yeah. you know, just the name. Woo, it was like was literally in my face. right there, like the second you said it. Man, I mean, I don't believe in anything in particular, but there's something but freaky going on with that. But that book wanted you to buy it. There's something <laughs> freaky going on with that. It really spooked me out. But no, elsewhere, definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely to the answer. The answer. To answer that question. That's cool. <laughs> I li yeah, I like that story. I'm glad I was there to witness it because 100%, if Robin had told me this after the fact, I wouldn't have believed that. Yeah, because I do exaggerate <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, is there a book I recommended to you that you disliked? You can be honest. Ooh. Well, like, uh, so I've already mentioned The Remains of the Day. I, like, really yeah. wasn't sure. Um, what else did I? See, I've, I've, hold, I've held back on recommending Harry Potter because he had such a bad experience yeah. with it. Yeah. Hey, that's my copy. Yeah. Huh, I forgot that I had it here. Yeah. <laughs> I need to you read, read it. it still. No, not yet. I need you to. will love it. I know. Yeah. I, it's, it's one of those that I'm like, yeah. Ah. Okay. You can, see, you can see the stress of Ooh. the TBR pile. Okay, I'll put it back. Wow, that is very tightly packed. Oh, yeah. There's plenty to read. Um, Honestly, no. I think because because Claudia knows me so well already, even before I started reading, hence how she got me back into it, and because I am very honest about things I like and dislike, I think you just have accepted that I don't I don't want to delve straight into classics. Mm. I don't really, you know. So you're easing me gently into the <laughs> things that you like, but well, then hundred percent recommending things that you know I like. Yeah, I don't think we have to have the same reading taste, no. like at all. No. You know? But then there's nothing that, I, that you've recommended that I didn't like. Like I say, mm. Remains of the Day, initially, I was like, I have no idea why she's recommended this to me. This is terrible. And like I say, <laughs> at the end, I was like, I can't stop thinking about the yeah. story. <laughs> I, I just love that book. But no, I also don't think that everyone has to read classics. I don't think it's, like, necessary in order to be well-read or whatever. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think, you know... I really did enjoy I Capture the Castle and I, and I think um, my perspective on classics has come from being forced to read classics in school. I think a lot of finding people's it perspectives. Boring. But like I never yeah. read the classics in school. Like I, I literally yeah. I don't, I, de I never finished a book in school that I had to read. Yeah. Really so I think, I think that's why I, I kind of have this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm definitely never, never going to not read the classics, yeah. but, but I need to ease gently into them. <laughs> I think the reason you'd love, um, the Secret, Secret Garden. Garden. It's because it has a sense of nostalgia about it that even if you if you didn't read it as a child, because I didn't read it as a child, I only read it last year, but you somehow feel nostalgic as if this is about your own childhood. Mm. And it's so lovely and I think you would love it. Yeah, no, I look forward to reading that. Ooh, last question. So we might actually get this in under half an hour. Okay. Uh, what is on your nightstand right now? I'm assuming this means books rather than... Bookshelf? Nightstand. Like, what are you reading right now? Oh, I see. Um, I'm reading The Valley Was Ours by Eileen Webb. Very okay. niche. Um, probably wouldn't appeal to lots of you. So I did a Welsh language course in um, somewhere in Wales, basically called the Llyn Peninsula. And there's one valley um, that used to be like a miners kind of village, very tiny village, but has now been, you know, um, developed into a language mm -hmm. centre. But they've kept it, you know, very kind of you know, tr true to its kind of roots and it's very still in, in looking as it probably did. But the, uh, the Valley Was Ours is a book that 
tells the story of the people who lived there before it was a language centre. So it was a lady that was brought up there. She's collected um, stories from other people and it literally is just stories. Oh, that sounds really lovely. Yeah. Is it Welsh or is it English? English. Okay. Yep, it's English. It probably is. There's probably a Welsh edition somewhere. But I think it's a residential Welsh course. So you spend a week there. Um, there isn't a lot to do, but it's really beautiful so it's right on the coast in this really steep valley that comes down and you can just picture everything in this book oh, you that's can amazing. imagine everything that's happening so if you've been there definitely read it but if you haven't re been there I mean you might enjoy it but it's I think there's something very sentimental about it once you've been there it's one of those yeah. places that kind of stay with you and resonate with you a little bit I'm probably just very romantic in that way but a lot of people who I know that have been there have had the same kind of feeling oh. about the place so it's yeah it's a wonderful book I'm plodding through it it's but, lovely yeah really hey. sweet yeah I enjoyed this video it's like I was Me interviewing too. you I know I really liked it because <laughs> I could talk about myself <laughs> yeah because like I've said everything I have to say about books ever so I'm going to tag Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventure because I would like to see this with uh, her husband, Anthony. And, um, hmm. I'm trying to think of booktubers who've had either significant others or friends in their videos because I don't want to force anyone to like drag someone in front of the camera. <laughs> the tea hags, if they haven't done it yet, they can interview each other. I'd Ooh. like to see them do that as well. Perfect. Okay, and I will probably box. watch them because I really enjoyed doing this video. It's quite yeah. a, it's quite a fun way of bringing up you know lots of different stories. I feel like I brought up the same ones, but remember, I have only been reading for two years now. So. No, it was it was great <laughs> and, and really fantastic questions. Yeah, yeah, really cool. So thanks again, Hannah. I will link her original video in the description box. So many links in the description box. Also, support me on Patreon if you like. I feel like I should say that more often because I haven't really done do it in the videos. The bookmarks are beautiful. We'll leave it there because this is uh, going to be a long video. It is. Sorry about that. But it was really nice to be back and yes. we will really seriously promise try to do more of... The problem is we're both not uh, going to haul books this year because we're both trying to reduce the number of books we have. Yeah. We're both trying to get through our TBRs. So we have to think of some other things to do together. Uh, if you have any ideas for videos we could do. Yeah, more tags like this. Box. Great, yeah. love it. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.